All right, fellow slayers, time to take a look at the next episode, which is Lover's Walk. At San Angel High School, Will complains about receiving a, seven, a 740 on verbal for her SATs, while Xander notes that her verbal score closely resembles his combined score. Buffy shows up looking shaken. Her unexpected SAT score of 1430 has opened up the possibility of a normal life, so she is unsure how to proceed. That night, Spike drives through the welcome to Sinnendale sign, then he falls drunk out of the car, saying, Home sweet home, before passing out. At the little burn of Brick and Brock factory, he begins to shout and cry, the stranger sells charred dolls and jerkily wondering why she left him. Aww. At school the next day, Xander persuades Cordelia to go on a double bullying date with Willem and Oz. Oz presents Will with a witch themed pest dispenser, and she is both delighted by the thoughtful gift. Giles, packing for a retreat, is delighted when he is presented with Buffy's SAT scores. Giles suggests that she has an opportunity to have a first-rate educational experience, being able to leave Sunnydale and her slayer duties to Faith. He warns her about seeing Angel, so she promises that nothing will happen between them because they're just friends. Meanwhile, Xander and Will are second-guessing the double bull uh, second-guessing the bowling day with Oz and Cordelia. Will is concerned that Oz and Cordelia will notice the attraction between her and Xander, as she resists Xander's attempt to kiss her earlobe. She and Xander restate their commitment to avoid physical intimacy with each other. Xander tells her that he wishes they could just get rid of their feelings of lust. That night, Spike stands outside the Crawford Street mansion and drunkenly rails at Angel for turning Drew against him until he passes out in the garden. Next morning, he wakes to find his hand of flame under sunlight. He runs around trying to douse his hand and avoid the rising sun, eventually diving into his car to tend to his wound. He first pours alcohol in his hand, then pours some more down his throat to ease the pain. Surveying his current state, he notes, This is just too much. Back at home, Joyce Summers continues to push the idea of college for Buffy. Buffy is resistant, so Joyce asks her what could possibly be keeping her in Sunnydale. Buffy then visits Angel in the mansion and asks his opinion on her future options, in the process trying to determine whether the two of them, where the two of them stand with each other. Angel suggests her as a friend to go. Suggests her as a friend to go, raising that it's a good opportunity for her to live a life outside of her calling. Buffy leaves. Spike sneaks into the back of Uncle Bob's magic cabinet shop during the day in search of a curse for Angel. He tells the clerk he wants something really nasty, like boils or leprosy, so to make his parts fall off. The woman then turns to attend Willow, who is looking for ingredients for a de-lusting spell. As she and the clerk discuss ingredients, Spike, out of their sight, pays close attention. When Willow leaves, Spike tells the shopkeeper, I would say a love spell for Drusilla would be an even better idea. Later that day, Mayor Wilkins is practicing golf putting out, is practicing golf putting in his office. Miss Deputy Alan Finch alerts him to their spike problem. The deputy suggests that Trick organizes into committee to deal with the problem. The mayor, after a few asides, ranging from offering the deputy soul for one good short game to whether allowing a loose cannon to rock the boat, is a mixed metaphor for good. It's a mixed metaphor. Good humorly, good humorly agrees. At school, the night of the double date, Willow is in the chemistry lab, working on the ingredients for her anti-love for her anti-love spell. Xander shows up and they begin arguing when he figures out what Willow is doing. Spike comes in, still very drunk, and attacks Xander, and now he needs to borrow Willow for a while. Spike takes Xander, unconscious from a head wound, and Willow back to the factory, where he locks him up. Spike explains the situation to Willow, first threatening her life if she fails to cast an effective spell. He then sits next to her and tells Willow that Drew had Thought she had gone soft after his alliance with Buffy and was not demon enough for her anymore. The final blow had come when he caught Drew cheating on him with a chaos demon, and she told him that they could still be friends. Little Trace half hardly comfort the distraught Spike. She then tells him that she doesn't have enough ingredients, so he takes her list and goes to collect what she needs. At the library, Will, Buffy is working out when Cordelia and Oz show up. Worried because the lab is torn up, but Will and Xander are gone. Buffy someone calls her. The Buffy hears over the line. Spike say hello, Joyce. Joyce offers him hot chocolate and advice. And he relates the details of his breakup with Drew and asks if she has any of those little marshmallows. Outside, Angel spots him talking in the kitchen, but cannot enter the house because he's not invited. 
Joyce backs away, accusing him of being evil when, Sp when Spike, taunts, well, Spike taunts him. Buffy suddenly arrives, pins Spike to the table, and invites Angel in. Spike tells him he's got her friends, so three of them should leave to get the supplies for the, for the love spell to be cast. Then he set Buffy's fence free. On the way to the shop, Spike is filled with pain for finally starting to sober up and reminisce and reminisces on her, on memories of Drusilla. Buffy offers to sp stake Spike to put him out of his misery, but Angel tells her that they still need him to find her friends. Buffy counters that he should probably just Buffy counters that they probably just like him in the factory, despite Spike's protest that he is not that thick. As Oz and Cordelia are driving, Oz catches Will of scent, a residual werewolf thing, and can tell that she is afraid. Cordelia declares it to be creepy, and Oz admits that he agrees. Buffy, Spike, and Angel are getting the supplies. Angel comments that he's going to a lot of trouble for the sake of, of the fickle Drusilla. So Spike takes a swing at him before blaming the two of them for the breakup. Spike says that he is nothing without her, which Buffy agrees, calling him pathetic. Spike retorts by saying that they sicken him. Last time he had seen them, they were fighting to the death, but now they're acting as if nothing has happened. They insist they are just friends now, but Spike tells them, You'll fight, and you'll shake, and you'll hate each other till it makes you quiver, but you'll never be friends. Santa wakes up to find that he and Willow are locked in the basement of the factory. They discuss what will happen to them. Will explains that she either casts a spell and Spike kills them, or she recently casts a spell and Spike kills them. Santa demands a third option. So it's just that Spike might have gotten so drunk that he will pass out and forget about them, leaving them starved to death. She knows that this last she knows that this this last possibility is her best option. Deciding the high probability high probability death is a mitigating factor, Will and Xander kiss, just in time for Oz and Cordelia to catch them. Cordelia is horrified and runs up the stairs, but they collapse as she and she falls through. Impaling herself on a piece of metal rebar sticking out of the rubble covered floor below. Ooh. As Buffy, Spike, as Buffy, Angel, and Spike leave for the supplies, they are surrounded by a group of Mr. Trick's vampires, led by one of Spike's former lackeys, Lenny. Spike points out that if Buffy and Angel leave him to die, the Will and Xander die too. Buffy reluctantly joins the brawl. After killing a few, they retreat back into the shop and barricade themselves in, fighting the vampires who get inside. Lenny insults Spike, making him beat and stake him in response. Eventually, Angel and Buffy use, holy, use bottled holy water to scare off the remaining vampires. Spike, inspired and refreshed by the thrill of the fight, realizes that the only thing he's going to get drew back is if he becomes the man he once was, the man she loved. He tells Angel and Buffy that their friends are at the factory and that he's going to find Drew, tie her up, and torture her until she likes him again. As he leaves the shop, he sticks his head back in to note, Love is a funny thing. Cordelia survives the fall. None of her vital workers are hurt. When Xander brings flowers to Cordelia in the hospital, she tells him to stay away from her. Will tells Buffy that Oz refuses to talk, to talk to her, and Buffy suggests time, patience, and groveling. Buffy visits Angel and tells him that they are not friends. She explains that she is not coming back because, because, he, does, because he does not need her help anymore, and she kind of maintained the lie about their friendship to herself, or a spike for some reason. Angel protests. But Buffy tells him that the only way they can see each other is if he tells her he does not love her, something he cannot do. Aww. Buffy, Angel, Cordelia, Xander, Willow, and Oz bruise in their own way, mourning for their broken relationships. Meanwhile, Spike is back on the road, smoking and singing along with the music on the radio as his car travels along the desert highway. Hmm. So let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. Cordelia asks, what kind of moron would ever, would ever want to come back to Sunnydale? After she moves to Los Angeles, she never goes back to Sunnydale. Spike's arrival at Sunnydale in the opening is a recreation of his arrival in Schoolhard, right up until he ramps his car into the Welcome to Sunnydale sign. Spike later knocks over a different sign when he destroys Sunnydale in the battle at the Hellmouth in the episode Chosen. The mayor has knowledge of Spike from the previous year. This episode marks an early example of Willow automatically turning to magic to solve human problems to make her own life easier. This will eventually become an addiction with drastic repercussions on her life. Santa reminds Willow that he tends to have bad luck with these certain spells, 
reference to the backfire Elizabeth cast his behest and bewitched, bothered, and bewildered. Spike tells Will about how he and Drew broke up, which will be seen in a flashback in Fool for Love. Will comforts Spike in a similar manner in the initiative. Joyce amiably hosts Spike in her house for a second time after becoming part two, a pattern that will happen again in Crush. Buffy reinvites Angel to her house after the revoke inv invitation ritual and passion, allowing him to enter the house uninvited and amends. Oz recognizes Willow's scent. This is also significant moon in New Moon Rising when he smells her scent on Terra. Buffy, Angel, and Spike will later fight side by side again in Old Demons Part 1. Spike decides to go after Sill to get her back. In the harsh light of day, he'll be back at Sandale after Sill cheats on and dumps him once again. Buffy says words to Angel, Tell me that you don't love me. Her identical with she and Angel were forced to reenact when possessed by ghosts in the episodes in the episode I only have eyes for you. This final episode with Xander Cordelia in a relationship. The friendship remains strained until the prom. This also marks the end of Xander and Willow's affair. The original track will be mentioned again as something from the past in Hell's Bells. And now let's take a look at some production notes right in this episode. The title of the episode has been cited on listings, books, and DVDs, and meant many as variously as Lover's Walk, Lover's Walk with an apostrophe, Lover's Walk with the uh, apostrophe whatever after the S. However, the script has the different title as Lover's Walk with no punctuation marks, so there's that. With the events of this episode, Cordelia gets an injury identical Cordelia gains an identical injury to her actress. Christmas Carpenter has a large scar in her belly from a childhood accident, being impelled by a rebar at five years old. Oof, did not know that until just now. So now let's take a look at some pop culture references. Willow refers to herself as Cletus the Sagjot Yokel, a hillbilly from the popular animated series The Simpsons. Buffy refers to weird science upon seeing the paraphernalia of Willow's spell preparations, possibly in reference to the film or the comic. Angel reads the novel La Nausier by Jean Paul Sartre. Oz gives Willow a pest dispenser in the shape of a witch. Buffy tells Giles to be kind, rewind. A rough seal of stickers that appeared on VHS rental tapes to remind customers to rewind them to the beginning before returning them to the store. And now finally, let's take a look at some goofs. When Buffy pins Spike down the kitchen table, the position of arms holding him in his red jacket changed between shots. During the scene when Willow and Xander discuss their options how to escape, the blood on Xander's face keep changing lengths, going from his cheek to his chin and back again. Hmm, interesting. So overall, I think this episode is uh, is kind of interesting, but also a little bit sad as well. So yeah, that's all I'll say about it. So overall, I give Lover's Walk three vampire stakes out of five. Well, anyway, tune in a little bit as we take a look at the final episode of the day, The Wish. So until then, here endeth the lesson. <laughs>